The safest place I'll ever be. Such peace, such love. Your love is better than life. Your love is better than life. My lips will glow.
Well, welcome, everybody. Good evening. We're at CBN Spiritual Gift Seminar. I'm Gordon Harris. This is James Gingrich. And uh, we're in Toronto, Catch Fire Toronto tonight. Got a great thing happening tonight. We've got some, uh, we've got an amazing speaker, Terry Leverod from Norway. He's been uh, burning up the classroom, I think, uh, this week with some great stories and experiences he's had. So hopefully you'll get to share some of those tonight. And we've got uh, Natanya on worship tonight, leading worship. And uh, that's, that's always a treat. I love it when she uh, leads worship. Uh, we've got some people uh, chat moderating over here. Wave, everybody. Yeah, they're so engrossed right now, they can't wave. But... Um, yeah, uh, if, you've got a, if you've got a need, you've got a question, uh, just go ahead and get on the chat, uh, uh, chat side of things and uh, they'll respond to you or put it right up here to the front where we can all respond to you. So, Natanya, over to you. Oh, 
Jesus shine through all the praise that we sing we sing oh come and let your presence fill our praise fill our praise come and let your presence fill this place Jesus yeah come and let your presence fill our praise fill our praise come and let your presence fill our praise oh come and fill come and fill this place lift your voices sing praise God let the praises of your people Your presence fill our praise, fill our praise. Come and let your presence fill this place for you. Yeah. You are the one we want to meet tonight. Oh, Jesus, shine through all the praise that we shine oh Jesus shine through all the praises that we sing Jesus oh Jesus shine through Jesus shine shine through oh Jesus shine through sing shine through oh jesus shine through all the praises that we sing jesus shine oh jesus shine through all the praises that we sing for you for you
just I just had this picture and I really felt like I should share it with you. And um, I just saw like these people and they were like um, crushed down by like these weights that were on their shoulder and this like it's like this wall and this pile of bricks have been like piled on top of them and it's like they couldn't get up any like so they're all, like hunched over and um, I just feel like some people have let their circumstances rule them and let the things that have gone on in their life they're like the things that have brought them down just really like take over their lives and they've not been able to get past it and it feels like there's been one thing after another and it's like every time you get a little bit of breakthrough something else comes around and it brings you back down but then I just saw God and he just came in and he had this sword and it was on fire and he just ran through and he just came through and he put the sword in the bricks and they just turned to ash and um, I feel like he's doing this and he's showing you how powerful he is today if you ask him to come to your into your heart and into your lives and into those situations he will show you his greatness and he will show you his glory and he will show you his power and he will come right into the depths of those situations and he will come and bring breakthrough for you. So yeah, God, I ask that you'll just come tonight for, for those people that are just, they're battling that and that's their, their lives and they feel like they're being weighed down and crushed down. I ask that you'll just come right now. Will you come with that fiery sword and will you come and bring breakthrough, God? And will you come and show your glory and show your power? Yeah, I ask that you just come deeper into our hearts and into our lives and you will reveal yourself, your true self tonight, God. Would you come in this room tonight with your glory and your fire and your power, God, and I ask for breakthrough.
during during worship, Susie got um got a picture, and she's just going to share that now with you all. Um, yeah, I just got a picture of some salt, and I really think there's someone out here that's been like a Christian for quite a while, and they just feel like everything is getting really bland, and everything's really the same, and they've been stuck in that same routine, and they're not seeing anything new happen. And I just really feel like God just wants to pour out like more flavor and more like excitement on your life, and that, you know, um, he would really just, you'd be able to see what he's doing and how far he's actually brought you. Yeah, so if that's you in the room, if you just want to stand up, or if that's you at home, if you just like want to message in, and I'll just pray for you now. God, I thank you that you love this person so much. And I thank you that you've got incredible plans and destinies for this person. And I just pray that you would come and fill them with that knowledge, that they would know that you want just an incredible destiny, Father, and they would just feel your presence in a really new way. They'd have just an incredible new encounter with you tonight, Father. Yeah, amen. So yeah, thanks Natanya for worship and um, James and Kathy and Terry, if you want to come up. And I believe you're interviewing Terry tonight, Kathy. Yes. Fantastic. Well, everybody, meet Terry. He is his last name is Liver. I don't know if we butcher it, but it looks to me like Liverod. Yeah, something like that. In English, you know what the liver is. It's yeah. yeah so <laughs> anyway, it's very easy to remember his name. But um, yes, so to those of you watching online, meet Terry. He is from Norway, uh, and uh, we're very, very <coughs> pleased to have you here. I'm this happy is, to be this here. This is sort of your initiation into CBN. This is your. Okay. We're sort of throwing him out into the deep end and saying, oh, it's just really easy. You just swim. So you like that kind of stuff. Yeah, I like right. that kind of stuff. So um, <laughs> on online, I believe you'll be able to see um, Terrier's name and it has his website there. So you can go and um, check out what's, what he's doing. But, but this guy has been doing missions for a long, long time. How many of you in here would love to do some missions someday? Look at that. It's like a room full of people. Um, and good. we can see you online if you've got your hand up there, too. So, um, so just out of interest, how did you first get into missions? Well... And you have to, you know... Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, about 28 years ago, God just started to put a burden in my heart. I read Romans 15:20 where he said that Paul, he, he saw it as a, a, an honor for him to bring the gospel to places where the name of Christ was not known. And then it started just the desire inside of me. I need to get the gospel to those people that have no chance to hear. Wow. Yeah. So, so how long had you been a Christian by that point? Uh, about three months. See, three months. <laughs> that's what's crazy. When you become a Christian, you read the Bible, you actually go and do the stuff. It's, it's, that's really, that's amazing. So, th and then how long till you did your first missions trip? Well, actually, it's about 29 years ago. Yeah. It, it took me uh, about two years. About two years to actually get. And where was the first place you went? To Sudan. Whoa. No, sorry. I had a small, small trip to, to France before that. And then to France. To yeah, France, you yeah. started with Fran well, <laughs> France, Sudan. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so tell us some of the other places that you've been to and maybe one of your favorite experiences and what God did. Well, I have been to most of the countries in the Middle East and North Africa because it's you know, the, the Muslim world that really God started to put on my heart. And uh, so I've been traveling those places that he, he put on my heart. And, um, well, let me tell you one, one story that really, really changed my life. I'll, I've told the students here this week, but I will tell you a very short version of it. I, I was in Egypt, and I had really, before I came there, I had some, uh, some uh, what is it? I went through some courses how to... Uh, to convince Muslims to become Christians. And it didn't work very well. <laughs> but one day, I, I just happened to meet one guy. Uh, well, it's a long story, but he was, he was seriously sick. He had been to the hospital for four months, and he was dying. And I, by a slip of my tongue, I happened to say that Jesus still heals sick people today. 
And actually, I didn't really experience it or really believe it up to that day. But the Bible says it, you know, so I quoted the Bible. And I was like trapped in my own words. <laughs> and some people said, e you have to come and pray for this, for this man. And he's dying. The doctor said he will have maximum two weeks to live. And I went there, and, and this guy was, was healed. He had an open wound in his stomach, uh, not his liver. <laughs> his, he had an appendicitis, uh, appendix operation that was not successful. And they had to open the wound three, four times. And he had an open wound uh, and was dying because of that. And, um, and God healed him. And, you know, I, I had, I didn't even look for someone to, to pray for because I didn't really believe in it. But God touched him, healed him, and his family invited me to his home afterwards. And about 20 of these people was there. And after they saw what God did, they, actually I knew them before this, and they just treat me like one of these youth that didn't have any place to stay. <laughs> and after this happened, they were saying, hey, before we eat, we, now to listen to, we need to listen to the prophet. He will speak. <laughs> and the whole family gave their life to Christ. Wow. And, and, yeah. Amen. That's good. That was a very short story. But, but for, it, through that, I start to understand that, wow, it's, it's not all what I can like explain, uh, but it's people, if people have a, a meeting with the living God. That is what is really changing them. Amen. And that's for all of us here and all of those in the camera, in the, you know, not in the camera, but. Uh, <laughs> Amen. Okay, I don't know if you've shared with some of these guys um, yet, but I want you to tell them your testimony of how you were, when you were born. When I was born? Yeah. Yeah, that's a special Very story. Very cool story. <laughs> you want to hear it? Yeah. A little bit, yeah. Okay. Um, I was, uh, well, I, my mother told me that when I was born, I was not crying, and I had my, the navel cord around my neck. I got uh, a voice that is a proof of that. <laughs> and uh, by the time I was uh, six, seven, eight years old, something like that, I needed a lot of help to be able to speak at all. And they took me to the National Norwegian Institute of, for Speak, speech handicapped people. And there they, they, they found out that actually there is no way to help me. And they gave me a paper stating very clearly that I cannot be a preacher or a teacher or a priest. Yeah. But God called me and, uh, and I had some trouble with my voice. You know, I, until the time I was born again, every time I was speaking a lot, my voice disappeared. That changed when I met Jesus. Yeah. Wow. Then, when I was about 25 years old, I was preaching in my hometown. And after the meeting, this old lady came up to me. And she said, well, I'm a midwife. And I have followed you since the day you were born. And I said, well, that's, that's a little bit spooky. You know, that's, uh, <laughs> she was full. I didn't know her. She was watching me. Uh, <laughs> And then she said, well, the day you were born, I was on duty. But I was not the, the one that delivered you. But I was in the, the next delivery room. And she said, I'm a, I'm a member of the Pentecostal church in town, and I know when God speaks. And while I was there in the delivery room, the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, immediately you need to go into the next room because there is a baby there that they thought he was dead. Because when, when I was born, the midwife that received me thought I was dead. I was blue. I didn't breathe. I, I uh, yes. And sometimes babies like that are dead when they are born. So they just threw me up in the corner and um, didn't really know what to tell my mother. She told me later that it took so long time before she got me to her breast. So this lady said that, well, I, God told me to go in and, and give me a, 
a bit in my back, so I started breathing. <laughs> and be, and it, she said, because I have big plans for him. So that was cool. Hallelujah. So already there, God spoke through this lady that he had planned for my life. Yeah. Amen. Wow. I would have been dead if it was not for that lady. I just spoke to her that once. Yeah. Never, saw her again. Never saw her again. Yeah. Wow. Maybe she's watching. She was about 80-something 20 years ago, but she might still be watching. <laughs> Maybe she's watching. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> so um, for those that might not know, um, tell us a little bit about what you do in Norway now and about the school there. Well, now uh, about eight months ago, I think ten months ago, we started in Norway the School of Ministry, Catch the Fire School of Ministry. Amen. And uh, there's a lot of people who have caught a fire. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, we have a school of ministry in Norway with some great students there. And um, it's, you know, it has really been amazing to see how, how the, the, the teaching and the time they have been in the school, how they have changed the students. And uh, especially the, I would say, the core values of Catch the Fire or Partners in Harvest. We have really been emphasizing on them. Gordon and Kathy, you have been with us twice already, two weeks. And we have had a lot of amazing, good teachers that have come to and poured into the students. And um, yeah, it has been really good. Yeah. Next month, two weeks from now, we'll go to Niger, West Africa, with, uh, with, on outreach with the people from the school. Amen. Woo! That is good. Don't you you wish, know, when yeah. they come with me there, they see firsthand God doing miracles through their hands. I know. Don't you wish you were at that school? Then you could be going to Niger. Oh, sorry that you are here in this school. So sad for you. You'd have to get the extra insurance for that, that trip, <laughs> oh, I think, yeah, you know, yeah. maybe. But, um, yeah, Lizzie, you, you went and saw Terry. Oh, didn't, did, did, you didn't go to Niger, though, but close, very close. Yeah, um, so in Ju July, it was July, um, I came to, I led a team to Norway, to Terrier's church, um, for outreach. Thank and, you. Um, <laughs> and it was so much fun. Like, we went on um, like this camping trip, this four-day camping trip, and, like, I, he got me trekking up mountains in the rain, in the mud, got attacked by mosquitoes, <laughs> and had to, like, lots of things like that that mm, I don't really do. <laughs> so, so, but, <laughs> You're a bit softer. Oh, but, sorry. Yeah. Other than that, like, oh, it was just so much fun. And just to see, like, we did, it was a youth camp that we were doing for those four days. And um, just to see the way that the youth came in at the beginning, and then, like, and they were unsure like what we were doing and what this whole thing was about. And then when they left, just to hear the stories of how much they'd enjoyed it and how God had really met them and spoke to them. And, you know, it, it really touched their hearts. And it was just incredible to see. And just the, the whole two weeks that we were there at, at his church, it was such a blessing just to be there. And I grew and learned so much just by being there. Yeah, it was really funny because we're usually on the other end of getting the information and we started getting these emails. We're out in the woods and there's all these bugs and poor Andrea, where are you? She, she got like some special, like special. something special some on her legs greetings. and had to go to the doctor all the time. But <laughs> at the very end, Lizzie piped up, but it was such an amazing week and the people there got so touched and transformed. So. Impressive. See, that was sort of the in entryway into Niger. Yeah. That's yeah. like you going to France, and then you went to the Sudan. Sort exactly. of the same. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, you know, that week that you were talking about, many of the youth that were with us, they say, well, at least three of them, they said, actually, we only came because we saw that you were doing paintball. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But when they left from there, they said, well, the paintball was the most boring of the... I mean, <laughs> it was nothing compared to the rest of this trip. <laughs> so there you Amen. go. There you go. That, that's a good... Uh, <laughs> yes, so, so little tip, bring your bug repellent. 
when you go on outreach. You never know if you'll need it. Yeah. You never know. That's the moral of that story. Okay, so we're going to turn this time over to you. And um, get ready. Buckle up. We're going to have a great uh, talk about missions. And then we'll be doing some prayer. So, Terry, over to you. Yeah, this is good. I like it here. <laughs> now, let's pray. Father, we just pray that you will come here with your, by your spirit right now. I pray that you will speak to everyone present. Come Holy Spirit, touch us, inspire us. We need your presence, Father. We need you to speak to us. We need you to speak to everyone present in this room and, and those that l watch over the, the uh, web. Yeah. Amen. I don't know really where to start. Okay, let me start with this. You know, God, he is, believe it or not, he is supernatural. He's divine. Amen. God is just out of this world, literally. <laughs> he, is, he is spiritual, you know. He's almighty. I mean, you know all of these, these things, but, and uh, you people watching there, you know. But, you know, there are some people, something that people don't really understand. Is when God, that is divine, He's supernatural. He's a, He's a spirit. He's He's not like like this world. When He is doing something, He is doing it in His way. You know, He's He's doing in it in a supernatural, divine, almighty way. Hallelujah. And that's why it, does, it looks a bit different sometimes. When the person is doing something and when God is doing it, it looks different. Because God is God. And you know, we need to, to start expecting and wanting God's and His kingdom to be visible among us. The Bible says that in Matthew 6.33, it says, Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. And you know, God wants his kingdom to be visible. What is the kingdom of God? The kingdom of God is where God is ruling. And God is ruling with love. Amen? God is love. And he rules with love. And in the Lord's Prayer, we are praying that let your kingdom come. Let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. And there is a time, and it is now for all of us, amen, that, that the kingdom of God will be visible. And who, how will the kingdom of God be visible? It will be visible through you and I. Amen? I, I am... Um, okay, let me tell you a story. From, um, from an Arab country that I uh, am working, and we have a, a permanent work there. And um, when I first met the man who is today our leader there, he had no idea about the supernatural or about the kingdom of God. And the first time I met him, he, came, he told me he had a terrible ulcer in his stomach. Well, oh, that's where the ulcers are, I guess. <laughs> and I felt God telling me to, to touch him and, and, and say that the power of God is here to heal you. So I did that. I, I just put my hand on his stomach. 
and the power of God started to to flow into his stomach and within two minutes all pain and all symptoms of the ulcer was 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 gone and he was saying hey what is this this is he, did, he have never he have never heard it he have never heard anyone talk about healing he had never you know slowly slowly over the years well that is about two years ago so it's not that many years but two three years ago something like that he had been seeing whenever I or someone from from us are coming visiting him or them miracles are happening people are getting healed and supernatural things are happening and I've been trying to teach him from the start that you you can do the same. And I said, you know, no, 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 I'm not from, from Norway. <laughs> you know? In Norway, people say, well, I'm just from Norway. I cannot, you know, do anything. And, um, and um, normally, whenever we have come there, he has brought a lot of, lot of uh, sick people to us. Last December... Uh, we had some meetings, and, uh, and one day when I was like having a rest between some of the meetings, this is a place where we cannot have open meetings. So we have meetings in, because it's forbidden. So we have meetings like in low-key places, in the homes. And uh, one day I was, uh, was waiting in my, in my hotel room, just resting, and I was quite exhausted. And my leader, the leader of the work there, he came and knocked at the door and he said, Hello, I have two good news to you today. Oh, two good news. The one thing is that we found, uh, well, he mentioned the name of one of the people in the church that had been gone for a while. And he said, he had just been on a journey, he's back and everything is well with him. And the other good thing is, I have a paralyzed man in my car. I said, was that, was that good news? <laughs> I have a paralyzed man in my, my car. I will run down and get him immediately, he said. I was sitting watching television. I was not really liking the, the mood, you know. <laughs> and he ran down to his car. I was in the first floor, so he took... So he and a friend of him took, carried this paralyzed man up and put him in a chair. And he said, here, you can start. <laughs> and I was thinking, hey, I actually, I didn't, didn't have any expectation right there and then. No expectation whatsoever. But I was thinking, well, maybe if I... If I just put my hand on him, pray a very quick prayer, he will take him away from here. <laughs> so I went up to him and said, I actually, I didn't reach to say anything. Just when I touched his, well, actually, his, it was only half of the body that was paralyzed. His left side was, was paralyzed. He couldn't move the, the legs and the arm. And uh, he was, and, well, part of the face also. And when I touched him, his arm suddenly choo, straight up in the air. And I look, he looked at his arm. Oh. <laughs> and he could use his arm. And then I said, well, that's cool. So I, I tested it on his leg too. <laughs> I went up to him, put my hand on his leg, and his leg choo. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, it's so fun to be a child of God. <laughs> to be a son of God and to be, to, you know, the thing is being a child of God, a son of the Almighty, I carry the presence with me. I carry the kingdom with me. You know, when Jesus came, he, he, he came to an, into a town or a village and then he said, the kingdom of God is near. How did he know? He was there. <laughs> Hallelujah! 
And so I know when I, I come, the kingdom comes. Amen. And so I put my hand on this guy and I said, uh, first his arm and then his leg went up in the air. <laughs> I said, why don't you try to walk? You know, I was more surprised than him, I think, because these three guys, the two guys that carried him and him, they really came expecting something would happen. And I just said, let me get rid of him. <laughs> yeah. You know, it helps to be honest. <laughs> you know, we are not only we are not always like in the spiritual mood. Well, we are always spiritual. We are always, you know, we are children of the Most High. Amen. So even we, we, when we don't feel, you know, like that, we still carry the kingdom. Amen. Hallelujah. Because it's not the, uh, about what we feel or what we know or all of those things. It's who is our daddy, who is our king. Amen. So he, this guy started, started to walk around slowly, slowly. And I think there's, there's a video clip from the first steps of this man on our website. If it's not there, I will put it there quickly. <laughs> At least I have a clip like that. And he, he, he was like walking little by little. And I mean, he started walking. And immediately he, he left the hotel. He, he had been in, in, in town, for, in the capital city, for, for many years trying to find a solution to his problem. And no doctors, no one could help him. So he immediately went down. He, sat, he got a taxi or a bus or something. He went down to, to his hometown, far into the desert, to tell his people. Hallelujah. Amen. And our leader there, he saw this, you know. And I told him, next time a sick pe person is coming, you, you should heal him himself. And I was thinking, you know, so he doesn't need to disturb me. <laughs> no, I wasn't actually. <laughs> when, when this happens, of course, it is really, oh, it's great. Hallelujah. Amen. But he could do the same thing. Of course. Anyone. We, we are all, these signs will follow those that believe, the Bible says. Not the, not the preachers or the ministers, or, but those that believe. Amen. Yeah, so I I tried to, to to tell him that look next time you do this, and then some months later I was back, and he had all this long list of people you know waiting for us, and God touched a lot of them and healed actually that he healed all of them, and um, we have seen that over and over again when we come to to Muslim. Uh, villages and towns where the gospel is not known all the people in our meetings are healed very often not always <laughs> then a couple of months ago I got a, a, an email from him from the leader there and he was saying Tadia you have to come now because I believe God told me that he will heal my, my brother-in-law so you have to come. <laughs> and Sarah said, I'm sorry, I, I'm not able to come now. You have to heal him. As we have been talking about for so long time, you go and heal him. And he said, no, 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 you, you know, it has never, it's always when you or some of your people come, that's when it happens. And I said, well, sorry, there is no way I can come now. You have to go and, and heal him. So he was so frustrated, and, and he said, okay, I will try. So he fasted one day. <laughs> I don't know, you know, try to force God to do something. Well, well I mean, <laughs> well, he fasted one day, and then he went to his, his, his sister and brother-in-law's house, who was a Muslim, of course, and he came up to him and said, you know, Jesus loves you, and today he will heal you. And he, he said, no, 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 no. He said, today he will heal you. 
And he went up to his brother-in-law and said, In the name of Jesus, be healed! He was paralyzed. in he both all his legs. And he took his hand and lifted him up. You know, I, I mean, raised him. And, and this guy tried to walk. And within half a minute, he walked straight. Hallelujah! Woo! <laughs> and and, and he, he phoned me and he emailed me and he was so excited. Oh, now people are saying, I have become like you. Well, the point is, of course, that they, we will become like Jesus. <laughs> but I mean, okay, let's give people a little bit <laughs> freedom to express themselves. And today, today, I got an email from him again. Hallelujah. Just this afternoon, he told me what was what happened yesterday? He said, yesterday, um, a friend came to his house. And a friend said, in my street, in my hometown, uh, that was not too far away, uh, there is an imam. You know, imam, that's a spiritual leader among the Muslims. And his daughter was suddenly paralyzed three months ago. And she has not been able to, to move her body at all from the neck down for three months. And, and um, you know, he has been going to all kinds of doctors and even to the, the Marabu. You know, the Marabu, that is the, the Islamic holy men, you know, that have their magical powers. And none of them helped. They couldn't help her. And... So what should we do, he said. And the leader of the, uh, my friend there, he said, let's go to him immediately. So they went to the imam's house yesterday. And they said, we have been sent here by God because God wants to heal your daughter. Jesus will heal your daughter here today. And, and the imam, he was, first he started, he was just laughing. <laughs> That's the most stupid thing I've ever heard. Well, I don't know exactly what he said, but he wrote that he was just laughing. He said, that is, no, no, no. <laughs> you know, and, but my friend continued to say, hey, it is true. Jesus will heal your daughter today. Well, he's quite bold. Huh? The thing is that God told us, Jesus told his disciple, go and heal the sick. Not to go and try to see if something happens. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. <laughs> so he went. This man had been so afraid of praying for anyone except if I was present or a couple of other guys. But now he was so bold. And, and after they have talked a couple of minutes, the imam, he stopped laughing. And it's because he understood that these two believers were, were serious. And he said, if that happens, if my daughter is healed, I will be your servant from today. And my friend said, hey, you are not supposed to be my first servant. You are supposed to be the servant of God. And to, be a, to become the son of God, a child of God. And the imam said, well, whatever you say. <laughs> <laughs> you know, well, it, the, people don't always understand the whole thing, you know. You don't need to explain everything to them immediately. So, so they prayed for the, for the girl yesterday, and immediately she stood up her, on her feet and started walking. Hallelujah! Woo! And the imam, immediately the imam saw that, he started shouting, Isa, Isa, Isa. That is what the Quran called Jesus, you know. Isa, Isa. And, and after a while they had to, to calm him down because, you know, it's all every Christian preaching or whatever is strictly forbidden in that country. So they, and, and he immediately gave his life to Christ. And right now, everyone in this room and you watching over television, let us pray for this man. Huh? Let, let's pray. 
pray together now father in the name of jesus we ask right now that you will touch this man you will strengthen him we pray that you will you will protect him and also my two friends there protect them father we ask that you will reveal your glory reveal who you are to this imam father and father we pray that you will give him wisdom and you will guide him how he will get out of his his daily work today and how he will be able to to serve you and we pray father that you will provide for him protect him and lead all of his family to you father including the daughter that was healed in the name of jesus amen isn't that cool Woo! that's the he told me the only one he he, he told uh, uh, this i mean that he told the story to was me and now i have told all of you hallelujah but i didn't tell you the country <laughs> but you pray for him amen so that's a that's a really fresh story but you know god is as i say god is divine god is supernatural everything he does is supernatural amen and uh, let's let's look at uh, first corinthians a bit In chapter 2, it says, Paul is writing, Brethren, when I came to you, I came not with excellency of speech or wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I was determined not to know anything among you, save Jesus Christ and Him crucified. And I was with you in weakness, in fear, and in trembling. My speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, with, but with a demonstration of the Spirit and power. Amen. You know, just before this, in chapter 1, Paul was talking about how God chose the weak things of this world. So that it will be very clear that when good things are happening, it's not by the power of man. That it's, it's by his power and his kingdom. And it, say, it says here that Paul was standing before them in fear and in trembling in much weakness. You know, he said first that he came not with excellence in speech. But people believe that Paul actually, well, if you read the Bible, you see some, some signs of it that he had what we call championship in speech, in speech, you know. He was a master of words. He knew how to really speak well. But he decided not to come to them with these great words. He was, I believe here when he says that he was coming in fear and much trembling, he was so afraid that his abilities, his knowledge, you know, he was really an educated person. He was so afraid that these things would attract people or get people's attention rather than the power of God. You know, he was afraid that he would uh, like hinder people to see God, to see Christ. That his ability would, would make people say that, wow, Paul is really good. He's a good preacher. That was never Paul's ambition or goal. Paul's ambition, it was that people would see Jesus. That people would see the power of God. That people would see his own weakness. Even his own trembling. So that they could understand that when, when this thing I hear is touching my heart. 
It's because it's the kingdom of God. It's not because he is such a good preacher. That's not the reason at all. And you know, 2 Corinthians 12, 9 says, My power is made perfect in weakness. When I, when I first read that verse, well, maybe I've read it before, but when I first saw that verse, it just exploded inside of me. Amen. God's power is made perfect in weakness. There is nothing, if you can come before God and say, I come before me, I just lay all my own things down. I come before you, Father. I give you my strengths. I give you my weakness. I actually have nothing to offer you except, well, everything. But I need you, Father. When we just lay down our own thing, we can come before, we can stand before people just like Paul and saying that, hey, it's the power of God we want to give you. And right now, I, I, I notice there is a, there's a, there's a flow, there is an anointing flowing out from this place over to, to you in the television, but for us here also. Let's stand up for a moment. Father, Father, stretch out your hands. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you right now. Father, we, we know that we have nothing to offer you that has any eternal value except ourselves. And we offer ourselves before you, Father. Come, Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus. I pray that your presence will flow over this congregation, over those watch watching in television. Father, come right now. You know, I, I, I suddenly saw... I saw a, a vision that I've seen before. I saw a, it was like a big army. Well, a big number of small toy soldiers. Well, there were people, but there were small, tiny, tiny people. A big army, but very, very small. And then I saw the Holy Spirit starting breathing. <sighs> Holy Spirit. A wind of the Spirit was just coming over this, this army of small, tiny soldiers. And suddenly, one of them just popped like a popcorn. Boom! And became a big giant. Hallelujah! <laughs> and as the wind of the Holy Spirit was blowing over this congregation of these small, tiny toy soldiers, one after each other was just popping my black popcorn and become big warriors! Hallelujah! Amen! Hallelujah! Come Holy Spirit! We ask that your, your, the, the, your wind will come over people in this room right now. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, over those watching at home. Come, Holy Spirit. <laughs> Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. We ask your, your wind, wind of your power. Come, Holy Spirit. Oh, thank you, Father. 
Thank you, Father. You know, there's nothing you cannot do as a son and a daughter of the Almighty. Father, I speak to the spirit of people in this room. Awake! Awake! Come right now. Holy Spirit, come right now. Stand up in your might. Sons and daughters of the Almighty. Hallelujah. Sons and daughters, they're watching television at home. Stand up. Let the Holy Spirit touch you right now. Let the Holy Spirit flow through. Flow through your, your whole being. Kathy, do you have something you want to say? Yeah, we're just feeling like um, we're just going to go into a time where we're going to pray for um, anyone that feels called to extreme missions. So if that's any of you here, you guys can come forward. And you guys that are watching on the internet, you guys can just go for it. Just receive this as well, even though you're not here. So if, if any of you feel... Um, like God's placed the desire on your heart or you feel like you're called to to travel to places like Terry has been to sort of like extreme mission places examples where maybe there's per persecution in the country we just come on forward and um, do you want to pray for them oh, Terry yeah, that's, that's great both places are really attractive places to go <laughs> yeah Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, those places like that is, wow, that's where the action is. Huh? That's a lot of people. Wow, it's hope for this world. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. And you're watching at home also. If you, you notice the Holy Spirit is just putting a desire in your heart. To go to those places where the gospel have not been reached before. they have been heard before. Where the name of Jesus Christ is not known. Just put your, put your hand on the, on the monitor or whatever. And, and we will pray for you. <sighs> Father, in the name of Jesus. We pr I pray right now. I pray that when, when, uh, uh, when we... What's your name again, Robert? James. When James and Kathy and I put our hands upon those that are here, we ask your, your, your gifts, Father, to come upon them. We ask your fire from heaven to come upon them and just equip them for the ministry that you are calling them to. Equip them for ministry, Father. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Father, in the name of Jesus. Shiki. Come, Holy Spirit. Let's, let's all start praying for them, huh? Father, we ask anointing for ministry. Anointing for extreme ministry, Father. In the name of Jesus. Come upon these people. Come, Holy Spirit. Shikaya. Oh. Amen. Amen. Oh, Shay, uh, when I saw you, I just saw like God raising a hammer, a hammer to break strongholds in the name of Jesus. Come, Holy Spirit. <laughs> oh, come, Father. Shakayara. Oh, go, Rayese Bombroto Yara. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Oh. I saw, I saw a, a flaming sword of fire coming from your mouth. 
Father, equip her in the name of Jesus. Oh, come Holy Spirit. Oh, come Holy Spirit. I release right now. Oh, I release your power and your fire upon Andrea, Father. team who had prophetic words to come up here and and to just come and give some of them so online we have several requests for um just let me change microphone too we have we have several requests for salvations of um, family members if you guys can put those back up again and you know, there's there we hear these incredible stories, and and sometimes we have more faith for places like Africa and the Sudan. Does anybody sometimes have more faith for those places than we do for North America and Europe? But 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 God, we want salvation for our own families too. And so right now we uh, we hold up. For example, Trisha has written online that she really wants her mom to get saved. And so Father, we ask right now that you you go and visit Trisha and 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 you go especially to her mom, Father, and that you you reveal yourself, Father. We hear these incredible stories about Jesus just showing up in in someone's living room or in their bedroom at night. And God, would you go and find Trisha's mom? And would you find her would you speak to her in a way that she can hear that that she can see you that that so that she can recognize this is actually jesus and would you find her and save her tonight father yeah. the lord just reminded me I, i'll continue pray, to pray just standing and re, receive but the lord just reminded me just like two weeks ago through no three four weeks ago it's this in Norway, I came into a restaurant where I have been sometimes, where I had like been witnessing for the for one of the, for the manager, and when I came into the room, the manager came running up to me. This was in Norway, and he said, "You know what happened to me tonight, last night? I just woke up, and Jesus was standing by my my bed." And I looked at him, and he was just shining with love in his face. And then I saw another man standing beside him. And when I, he was a bit smaller, but he was shining also. And when I looked at that man, I saw it was me. And I knew I had to follow Jesus. And there and then he gave his life to Jesus. Amen. And we have been starting seeing r miracles, powerful healings happening in Europe. And last week I went to Minneapolis. We saw a lot of things happening there. And the time is also for the Western world. Amen. It's not only for Africa. It's for the Western world also. And we will go and we will see the kingdom of God manifested in power also in the Western world. So we have some more prayer requests online, and I'm just going to get um, some of the students here to, to just pray for them. So Isaac. Yeah, there's lots of requests coming up asking for salvation of family members. So if you're at home and that's you, this is for you and your families right now. So we just join together and we say, Father, come reach out to those people in these families who are struggling to meet you. And we bless the witness that you're being through your children in their lives. 
and I just see that there's real blessing on your lives right now and that all of you who have typed in with this request have the faith to see salvation in your family and God is going to reward that faith but we just ask right now Lord you would come in a more intimate more powerful way that you would manifest yourself in a way that no one can deny that would be real and tangible and that you'd really come and bless their lives we ask you know if this is you at home and you are desperately hungry for the salvation of your family we just speak blessing into your life and we just ask lord for more power a real encounter a real encounter um peter would you like to come and pray as well could we get the next prayer request laura and just come stand here I want to pray for Gary. Yeah. Yeah. Good job. Yeah. Surgery tomorrow for his cancer. I pray. Oh, Father, there is no sickness, there is no disease in your presence. Father, I want to ask you, your power will be healing, your light will be healing. Father, I believe that there is no pain, there is no sickness. In Jesus' name, there is no pain. Your pain is already gone. I declare your healing in Jesus' name. Amen. God, I just um, pray for Danica. I pray for your healing touch on the uh, frontal headache. Um, yeah, Lord, I just that's even going into the neck. God, I just pray that your hand of healing would touch, um, touch the neck, God. And I just pray for your restoration now and your healing, Papa. I just pray that you take away all pain, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, so BMH, I was going to pray for um, healing for your mother, um, who's still in pain from strokes um, that she had two years ago. So, yeah, Father, I just, um, I just lift your daughter up to you today, Lord, and I just ask that you would just take all the pain away, God, that she wouldn't have to live with that any longer, Dad. I just ask your healing power would just come and just touch her, God, just flow through her right now, Holy Spirit. Um, before the meeting, we had um, some of our team were... Um, we we're just asking God uh, what He wanted to to do tonight, and and what He wanted to to tell us. So I'm just going to invite some of them to come up and and share what God told them. So Olivia, just come stand here. So just share what. Just go for it. Okay. Um. When we were just praying before the service, I just got a picture of God. He was just. He just looked like fire, and um, he opened his arms wide, and you could see into his chest. And in his chest, I could see, you could just see love flowing out of him. It was like white light. And he was just saying, like, we put ourselves in these places of vulnerability, and, like, we want to go to these dangerous places too, but, like, God's also in this vulnerable place with you. He just wants to love on you and be with you and just wants to meet you in that place. And with his strength, he just wants to make you strong so that... If you ever want to go into a dangerous place or anything like that, he's, if you're vulnerable, he's vulnerable. And just know that because he is naturally strong, so are you, because you have strength in him. Papa, I just pray that you just bring a revelation of that. Just, um, just flow down with your spirit on these people, God, who just want to go to these places, Lord, that you would just bring your revelation of your strength, God, that they are strong, they are strong, God, that you are with them always, God, and whenever they're in a place of danger, God, or a, a situation that feels dangerous, God, that you are there, God, and it's safe because they have safety in you, God. You are rescue, you are comforter, God. You're everything we need, God. Thanks, Olivia. Susie, do you want to share what God told you? Come stand in the middle, though, so they can see you. Um, I, I'm just going to actually do the prayer request okay. for um, Lee. Um, apparently, he's got heart problems, so I'm just going to pray for you now. Oh, Lee, I just lift you up. I just 
Thank you that, Jesus, you want what's best for Lee. You want to come and heal him now. So in the name of Jesus, I just relieve you of all chest pains and all heart pains. And I tell them to leave right now in the name of Jesus. I thank you for your healing power, God. And just bless Lee. I bless his whole body. I just speak health and well-being and total, like, wholeness over his body that he would just be completely relieved of any pain or any discomfort right now in the name of Jesus. And Lord, right now, I just pray for Daniel, who needs a creative miracle in the mouth um, with gums and two new teeth, Lord. And I say, uh, Lord, just work a creative miracle right now. Um, we speak new, um, new life to your mouth. May, may it not just um, be healed physically, but may, it, um, may your mouth become an instrument of truth. Um, to those around you. Um, so we just speak healing to your mouth right now in the name of Jesus. Um, he is the God who creates, and we speak new teeth to you. And we speak, um, we speak health over your whole body as well. Cool. So before I tell you the verse, I was thinking, I was, you know, during worship, I had this, like, I was just thinking. And it seems that sometimes during life, we just we go through it and we kind of just make stresses big stresses out of you know we just kind of stress about life it could be school it could be whatever you're dealing with kind of thing it could be just like i don't know what kind of, you just kind of you kind of feel like you're walking around in circles or like you're a chicken with your head cut off or something like that and you just sometimes it's even just little things that you just make a big deal out of and i, I was thinking about that and uh god gave me this verse it was really cool it's matthew 6 verse 31 and it goes a little bit down it says so do not worry saying what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear for the pagans run after all these things and your fa your heavenly father knows that you need them but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well and it really kind of spoke to me in that sense because sometimes we worry too much sometimes we're just like Oh my goodness! I don't. I, I. You just feel like I, you're just. You're like ah, ah, ah. I don't know what to. You know. I don't know what to like put my energy towards. And I just feel like God kind of just like sometimes he just wants to look at you and he's like, you need to rest. You know. You need to know that I'm your dad. I hear you. I know what's going on, kind of thing. And I got you. You don't have to. You don't have to worry because I got it. You. you don't have to. You don't have to worry about your finances. You don't have to worry about what's coming next. You don't have to worry about your next step. You don't. You don't have to worry if you have enough food. You know. He's like. I'm your dad. I got you, you know? It's like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be your dad and just be like, peace kind of thing, like kind of take my hand off your life. I got my hand on your life. And I just want to like, I want to pray if any, if that kind of like sticks to anybody in here or on the television, I'll just like kind of pray into that for you. So dear God, I just want to, if anybody's out there kind of feeling like they're running with their head cut off kind of thing, where they're just like, I don't know, I'm just stressing about everything and I feel like there's nothing to grab onto and I feel like, I just feel like I'm grasping onto thin air. God, I pray you just kind of really step inside their comfort zone and really get in their comfort zone so they, they feel that comfort of knowing that it's all taken care of already. And that, you know, it's, it's, all, it's all good that you got their hand, that you got your hand on their life. And that it's just, they don't have to worry that they're already resting in you. And that they don't have to do anything. They just have to, like, stay there. So God, I pray you just, if anybody is feeling like that anywhere, I just pray that you just let them know that you're in their bubble and that you're staying there and that you got them. Okay, I uh, just got the word uh, carpal tunnel. It's carpal tunnel syndrome. So that's um, a problem where you have pain, numbness, or tingling in your um, hand, wrist, or arm. So it's often in the last two, two, thing, last two fingers. Um, is there anyone in the room? Carpal tunnel? Well, just, just, pray. just pray for them. Okay. Okay, yeah, so, yeah, right now I just take authority over carpal tunnel syndrome. Um, I just speak healing to the hands, the wrist, and the arm. Uh, just be healed in Jesus' name. 
So yeah, actually, that was one of the ways we got tonight in our prayer here for Carpal Tunnel. So yeah, God really wants to do that tonight, and He really wants to heal any any of you out there with Carpal Tunnel. So I just believe for that healing right now, and I and I just tell you just to grab that healing from heaven and claim it for yourself. Um. So thank you for joining us tonight. We've had so much fun, and um, join us again next week. And um, there's, if you haven't had prayer tonight, there's a there's a number coming up on your screen. The number is one eight hundred seven five nine zero seven zero zero. So if you just like anyone to, um, to pray with you and and just to talk to, you can just phone them, and they they would love to take your call. So we're going to end in some worship now. So have a good night and we'll see you next week.